I am a content creator in a post-2017-2016 YouTube environment where there's not a huge amount of incentive to create content anymore. I mean, especially when you're making content that is not woke or toes the line uh, in terms of the, the political status quo defined and maintained by Silicon Valley, who have created a very strange atmosphere on YouTube where there's just an ever-present threat of censorship. Still, I want to thank everybody for tuning in so far and getting us to this point. 1,000 subs, pretty stoked. You know, I'm not going to monetize the channel. I'm just going to be inviting myself to get nuked. So, hey, we're just going to continue on with a regularly scheduled programming from the twilight intersection between politics and gaming, right? Because I think it was um, Matt Lees. One year at Gamescom, he did this presentation where he argued that all video game discussion should be political and video games themselves should be politicized. Like, that's a good thing, right? So he was making this argument years and years ago, actively encouraging devs to become more political, go further to the left, implant as much of their ideology as possible into the games themselves. Because according to these journalist types, you know, the, the base state of the gamer is this ignorant lumpen prole that is simply too dumb, too unsophisticated to see just how much better the industry is now that the issues of social justice are not only front and center in terms of just the content of the games, but also it should be the only issues that are worthy of discussion and, and of, of focusing on. And if you happen to already have some beliefs of your own that perhaps may not jive with the political monoculture of the industry, well, you need to be dealt with. Like, re-education isn't even on the cards. It's more of a, no, you need to be exiled from the industry, your life should be ruined, and that's fine. I mean, look at the recent Five Nights at Freddy's controversy. Right, okay, the dev is a Christian. That's literally it. He has, you know, traditional Christian beliefs. Same thing with Doug Tenapel, right? Creator of Earthworm Jim. These once revered creators in the industry are, are now cancelled because they have the wrong politics. And one of the reasons that I made this channel in the first place was simply watching the decline of the industry in real time. Because I guess there's this listless attitude that we have these days. We've just kind of accepted it as, well, that's progress. You know, how are we supposed to progress as a society without destroying the subcultures of the past? So whether it be, you know, Magic the Gathering, comic books, Star Wars, there's a lot of these traditionally nerdy subcultures that have been infiltrated and destroyed. And it's kind of, we're, we're living in, in the wreckage, the ruins of the wokeification of our traditional culture. So, yeah, I mean, and, and you know, I, I don't feel listless, I feel angry. And I think a lot of other people feel angry too, because once you've done a, a pretty basic overview of politics in the 20th century, you can understand that what's happening to video games right now and what's happened was unnecessary. It wasn't something that needed to happen. It only needed to happen if you're the kind of person that hates Western European culture and history and ideas. And it's funny because there is this crossover value with video games involving Japan and Asia. And if you look at Japan, it, it is a democracy and it is a Western-style democracy. And in a lot of ways, Japan proves that Marxism and communist ideas are fundamentally flawed. On paper, Marxism is supposed to empower the working class. And once the working class acknowledges the benefits of a, a communist Marxist kind of society, they will simply turn away from capital, capitalism. And when Western workers were given the option of pushing more towards a communistic kind of system, they chose profit. They chose the free market. The benefits of free market capitalism were too obvious. It was too clear. You know, people were watching each other profit, make money, and improve the quality of their lives. Pretty much a no-brainer. Meanwhile, you look at countries that did embrace communist ideas, and they're all starving to death, you know, and it's incredibly dysfunctional and, and can only be maintained through propaganda and extreme authoritarianism. And the reality is, Japan embraced a Western-style free market, and it worked for them, proving that this racial angle that you see modern Marxist thought kind of engaging in, where 
there's this element of whiteness that is also tied to capitalism, that it's not just the system, it's that there's this element of supremacy, racial supremacy, inherent to Western markets and, and capitalism, you know? That's been thoroughly debunked purely just from the success of non-Western European democracies, you know? The fact is, it worked for Japan, it worked for South Korea. These ideas are valid. And when you look at those countries now, it's working for them better than it is for us. Because right now, we are in this quote-unquote late stage of capitalism. And that, that is like a Marxist term, really, to describe the capitalist system in decline that must be replaced with communism, okay? So it seems like we are being manufactured into this late stage right now. Purely because, I mean, if you just look at the central banking system, it, it keeps people disempowered economically, right? That's the point. So right now, they are kind of creating the conditions for this great reset, complete transition away from the free market to some kind of neo-Marxian alternative. The outcome has already been decided, okay? We are getting this leftist, bugman, corporate nightmare, you know, dystopia. That is what is on the table. And this is the left's cultural victory. It just seems like it's inevitable. Their vision for the future is just the only valid perspective in society. And, you know, if you don't agree, then you are shunned from the public space. And any even remotely right-wing or traditionalist or you know, even at this point, even like classical liberal kind of perspectives, the left will not tolerate any of this. It's all kind of out in the open now. I think Trump brought that out of them. It really exposed that authoritarian side of the left that simply just will not take no for an answer. They will just impose their will ruthlessly onto the world, you know? And that is the thing about leftists. They do have this will to power that makes them just this relentless force that is almost irresistible. The thing about progress is that there really is never a cutoff point. There's never a maximum amount. It's just continue down the path of post-modernization forever. Which obviously, you know, if you extrapolate like a few more moves down the line, it results in complete societal collapse. And I guess the big flaw with, you know, libertarian Western democracy is that the left will just demand power. And what are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do? Just be like, no. I protest, you know, I, I don't consent. It's like, okay, how's that worked out for us so far? How'd that work out for us during Gamergate? <laughs> how's that worked out for the Republican Party? Like, they're conservatives in an almost satirical sense, right? Well, they, ju they just conserve whatever the left's agenda was 10 years ago. That's how corrupt our politicians are. But ultimately, when you look at the general public, you know, the, the ubiquity of wokeness and, and leftist thought is simply a media illusion, I think. It's, it's, it's manufactured in a lot of ways. Especially via censorship, because like when given the choice, workers simply prefer capitalism. I think that's the key thing to take away here. You ask a communist, they won't, they won't talk about this, but Marx himself, and even uh, you know Marxists of the Frankfurt School during that pre-World War II era, were lamenting the failure of Marxism as it was traditionally developed because it turns out the working class were not making the quote-unquote correct decisions. They chose the oppressive capitalist free market over this emancipation that was prescribed to them by, you know, th these intellectuals that have never worked a day in their life. Marx himself was elite. He was an elite. So this really is the reason why the people forcing this stuff on us are so violent and so almost militant in a way. They, they are radicals because mass censorship and social shame, that's like not far enough for a lot of these people. It's amazing how many leftists have this extreme authoritarian point of view, right? Where they simply see the failure of Marxism over the, you know, the, 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 the 20th century, right? And they go, okay, well, the reason why it failed is because people just don't know what's good for them. You talk to some of these, these leftists and, and they claim that all of their word salad is in favor of the working class. That's kind of rich coming from a modern leftist, to be honest. I mean, it's very clear that a lot of these people have a contempt for the working class, at least the modern white working class, both in the UK and the US and all over the Western world. 
there is this manufactured cultural consensus of disdain for the white working and middle class. It's both a Hollywood meme and an academic creation. And this explains the phenomenon of games journalists absolutely loathing gamers. You know, it's the same energy. And I mean, you know, does Jeff Bezos want to empower the working class? Do any of these elites give two shits about you and me? Or are we simply insects to them, you know? And they, they've, they've hijacked the Marxian leftist dialectic and they've turned it into a weapon to destroy our previous system and society. But I don't think they want to replace it with a, a communist utopia. I think that they want to replace it with this kind of technocratic, progressive corporate vision of the future, built on leftist ideals, at least on the surface. Although, you know, at its core, there really is some kind of occult shit going on here with Luciferianism and Kabbalic mysticism, Sabbatian Frankism. I mean, there's your iceberg. Just read Klaus Schwab's, uh, you know, work with the WEF to understand what the plan is, because that's the plan. There is a plan being executed, and leftists are simply useful idiots. I've mentioned it before, but they are. They're being used as the intellectual foot soldiers of this revolution that's happening right now. And video games being ruined is collateral damage. It's worth it. Fuck it, who cares? You know, gamers are just a bunch of white men anyway. For all of their claims of in inclusivity and of racial sensitivity, it's all just anti-white, right? I, I think that we need to call it out. I think that leftists need to be accused of being anti-white because that's what it's all about. And I think once you understand that, it's easier to kind of shrug off the demoralization and propaganda coming from the modern left, the, the woke left. It is just a big racial circle jerk. That's what it is. I mean, the left resurrected the spirit of racism, quote unquote, because racism itself is a Marxist term, right? There is an anti-Western angle to it. You know, it's like you can't really be racist if you're non-white. I mean, that's just the way that this Kafka trap functions. But I've heard the phrase neo-racism being used to describe the bigotry of the left. So, you know, however you want to look at it. Kaczynski was spot on with his psychoanalysis of the left. All of these crying, over-socialized narcissists that claim to be, you know, activists or whatever, really they're just virtue signaling fucking sickos. But the thing that, that I find very amusing is that they themselves have invited the rest of society to view the world through a racial lens. In the 90s when I was growing up, there was an agreement that we would try and see past race as a society, you know, and that was America, right? Because America is not 100% white. It is, for better or worse, le melting pot. And I admire that in the 90s with a civic nationalist worldview, which I, I don't think is a cohesive and functioning worldview. Unfortunately, it's quite utopian. But one of the things that was quite cool about America in the 90s was that there was this agreement that we would just simply treat each other as individuals. And that is all, that's what liberalism was supposed to be. Neo-Marxists have invited the rest of society to become fixated on race, obsessed with race. And if there was a cultural watershed that marked the beginning of this switch in perspective, it was definitely Obama becoming president in 2008. Because he, I mean, he is literally a diehard Marxist. I mean, this guy was mentored by Saul Alinsky. The man that wrote the fucking infamous book, Rules for Radicals, the playbook of the modern Democratic Party. And these are the kind of people that are saying, you know what? No, 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 no. Civic nationalism is not something that we want for America because it's about disempowering white people. It's not about equality. It's not about creating some kind of harmonious multicultural utopia like Star Trek TNG. Modern leftists are really just overt anti-white zealots who blame everything bad in the world on white people. Even the term white is kind of a manufactured term. It, it really is not organic because I don't think the European peoples ever conceived of themselves as white. They were always kind of separate, independent European ethnicities. And there is this dehumanization that takes place. But it, I, I find it kind of ironic that, I mean, 
from a behavioral point of view, they're kind of acting like the very cartoonish villains that they have conjured into existence. I mean, I'm not sure a lot of leftists really know much about, you know, the economic system of the National Socialist Party, circa 1938. And yet they throw around the label of Nazi, you know, it is kind of this powerful linguistic weapon of the left, you know, because it's this charged word that comes with all this baggage. You're a terrible person. You, it's a slur. Should anyone really be wasting time with this nonsense, you know, like using political affiliations of the early to mid 20th century as like an insult? Like, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a Nazi. Well, you're a fucking syndicalist then. I mean, but yeah, I mean, somebody asked me like recently in a comment, well, what are you then? Are you some kind of anarchist? Like, what's the deal? I'm very, very fond of a lot of Western ideas philosophically, but I think a lot of them have been proven to be untenable. That's for sure. I think libertarianism is something I found appealing at one point before I really understood how the left functions and how you can't just simply barbecue and just ignore what's going on because eventually they're gonna you know they're gonna come for your monster they're gonna come for your tendies you know i read ayn rand i think i was a bit too naive and young to fully digest the message of the fountainhead right but i thought it was really cool i didn't see where the leftists really were coming from when they would criticize ayn rand's objectivist philosophy which is kind of this like paleo anarcho capitalism at its core Ken Levine's Bioshock, the whole game, the whole plot, it's its very anti-American, very anti-libertarian. You know, that's the kind of message that Levine was going for. And it's interesting because Bioshock is one of those games that was political at a time before games were just all, you know, just nothing but Marxist propaganda. You know, back, back when Bioshock came out, it was like, oh, well, look at this unusually, you know, big-brained um, commentary, right? Like, it was, it was kind of a novelty back in 2007. Andrew Ryan is this Walt Disney analog, you know, and his dream of a totally free market, you know, and whatever, his his utopia of rapture is was just a total failure. It's dystopian. Okay, cool. Like, at that time, it was kind of like, yeah, I'm in college and uh, I'm smoking pot and playing Bioshock and reading Ayn Rand. Like, cool. Then you grow up and you, you play Bioshock Infinite and you're like, this is kind of just a hateful screed against Americanism, <laughs> you know, like at the end of the day. Looks cool, great atmosphere. I, I like the game to a degree. I, I think it's pretty overrated. But, you know, the whole opening when you're pelting like a, a mixed race couple with fruit, you know, and the crowd of, of patriots is just in this absolute frenzy of racial hatred. Yeah, and then you go, okay, Mr. Levine, like I get it. Now I, I understand what where you come from politically. And that's the thing, isn't it? Creators have been free to level critique at America and the foundations of America. That's been fair game for a long, long time. And I think as millennials, most of our lives have been defined by this total immersion in irony and snark and satire. You know, I, I think a, a show like The Simpsons is like a perfect example of this cultural kind of temperature that we've had to exist in, this atmosphere, right? Where nothing is sincere. This satirical vision of white America, that is what The Simpsons is at its core, but it's very cynical. And it's quite, you know, I mean, like, look at Homer Simpson. He, it's kind of like an ugly stereotype of the white working class man. That is part of the millennial experience, but we're beyond that now. We've entered the era of post-irony, where I think a lot of people are starting to realize that, you know what? There is an appeal in sincerity. There's, a, there's an appeal in tradition and in the way things used to be, right? There's a reason why we all pine for periods like the 90s, the early 2000s. It's because society made sense then. It had problems, but it was tolerable, it was workable, and it was even, in some cases, pretty awesome. And things like the video game industry could never have arisen without things like the Western free market that rewards things like ingenuity and creativity and talent. Um, you know, Andrew Ryan unironically did nothing wrong. Now, you know, the left are in control of culture and it, it has to be about race and video games have to be about race and everything is about race. The whiter you are genetically, like the worse of a person that you are at this point. 
This is the left's vision and conception of some kind of racial utopia. Uh, it's too late now. We can't go back to the 90s Sivnat vibe. It's, it's too late. We have to progress forward. And the left is saying, okay, well, it has to be this extremely like hostile, anti-white status quo. That's what they want. They're the ones teaching courses on this stuff, okay? <laughs> like the deliberate destruction of the white middle class and the total disenfranchisement of the white working class, you know? I mean, that's kind of the thing that they're cheering on because they see that as this great evil. And that's how they see everything that has an element of masculinity, of logos, of an empirical truth, of objectivity. This kind of stuff is all just haram to the modern left. How could I align myself? How could any sane and rational person align themselves with this just nonsense? It's, it's chaos. Politicized chaos. The, you know, as I, I mentioned in another video, you know, I, I, this isn't my quote, but it's a great quote. It's that philosophically, the left just embodies the force of entropy, you know, in the universe. It's decay. It's people who are so nihilistic and hateful that they've become agents of chaos and of destruction. It's exactly like Warhammer 40k, you know, they've been taken by the forces of chaos and now they seek to subvert the Imperium of Man. But for me, you know, I'm, I'm currently, I'm crafting a new political identity and it's not new. It's just, I'm a gamer. And uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna let gaming drag me down. Okay, because being, being a gamer is more than just the, the, the current health of the gaming industry, which is, fucking terminal right now absolute terminal thanks to like who who is it yeah yeah neo-marxists <laughs> like again you you forced me to go down so many rabbit holes just trying to understand why video games like have to be terrible now like for the good of humanity video games have to be terrible that's like you know i liked it when video games were, were awesome <laughs> like hey this, oh but i know it makes me a terrible person to say that but you know what like Maybe the foundation of your entire ideology is just a bunch of bullshit. It, just, it boils down to, we don't like white people. Okay, fuck you then. Then you are the actual bigot. You know, by your own standards, you are this, like, actual identity-obsessed pathological narcissist, right? So, yeah, like, disregard. I'm sorry, but yes, it's time to disregard the left. Because, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It feels like they've taken over every institution that exists in society, so... You're just being bombarded with propaganda from every angle at this point. And now that Trump is just history, right? He's toast. Now, yes, okay, we can get back to business, which is to disempower the white middle class in the West at all costs. It's a very schizoid time for the gentleman gamer. But we press on because, hey, you know, all is not lost. We still have Japan. We still have our minds we can still think freely from software are still making games and we, you know we have blockchain we have crypto even though it's suffering right now we still have a lot of hope and a lot of potential and really that's the thing isn't it it's that video games don't have to be terrible but in order to fix the industry big conversations have to happen you know that there has to be some kind of reckoning some kind of confrontation here and it has to be biblical because i guess that is the situation that we're all facing. And hey, you know, while we're on the topic, right, I, I guess every ideology must have its creation myth, you know, because that's how this kind of stuff works. And it's always, this is how it's always worked. So the creation myth of the left is obviously World War II. It is simultaneously the source of the original sin of white guilt. And symbolically, Hitler kind of takes on the role of the devil and this gives leftists this very distinct moral compass, you know, where fascism is the, the ultimate evil. And you don't even have to define fascism. You just label whoever is your political opponent. You just label them as fascist, and that's how you win the argument. It's very, very simple, and it's very, very effective. It's the equivalent of being charged with heresy. And that really does kind of expose this religious aspect to the left. But you know what? Hey, it makes sense. Look at the Western world, the Western lore. Like, what is the creation myth of the West? Well, it's obviously the Bible. As in Christian morality kind of underpins the, the Western world. You know, whether you like it or not, it's true. What's the creation myth of the, of the gamer ideology? Well, hey, Gamergate, right? Or at least it's the, it's the Horus heresy of the gamer 
lore. It's the event that cast a generation of men into a battle for the very soul of Western civilization. 